And yeah, I absolutely love my curing chamber. The original design was good, but it wasn't quite what it needed to be. So I've made a couple of upgrades here, so let's check them out. The main issue with the original design was that I had a single fan here pushing humidified air out. However, when I had a large quantity of meat in here, a lot of salami or even just like three nice big pieces of charcuterie dry aging, it would be a little too humid and that one fan was working super hard to get that air out. So what I needed was a second fan so that I could actually also cycle fresh air in, lower humidity air, and just make that turnaround time a lot quicker. So let's see how I did that. So my first task is to replace the fan that's right here. This is my output fan that takes the humidified air from inside the curing chamber and pumps it out. So in the spirit of not making the mistakes of the past, I'm going to run with stainless steel on all of the fasteners in here. The only thing that's not going to be stainless steel, unfortunately, is this. This is a galvanized steel uh, L bracket here, one inch L bracket. Unfortunately, I couldn't find this in stainless, so I'm going to be using some rubber washers here, just any spot where we're likely to get much contact between the the stainless and the and the L bracket there, just to make sure that we don't wind up with excessive rusting issues. Now, one thing I am going to do is I have some of the original screw holes here from the original bracket that was in there. I'm just going to use some of this black Gorilla tape here, and that's going to just cover those up. No problem. It's like it never happened. Now. I've already gone ahead and run my cable through the, the port that I have here. Everything including this connector port, which is going to be important because I'm going to need that for the second fan that's going to run through here. Fortunately, I have just enough play for it to get through where I'll be able to connect on the outside. I've also gone ahead and just removed these rubber feet that were through these holes here. First of all, I, I won't need them on this side and this side here. I'm going to utilize the holes that those feet were sticking through in order to actually mount this fan. And now I'll be mounting the fan. Here I've got, these are uh, 10 30 seconds, stainless 10 30 seconds by three quarter inch machine screws. And I'm going to be running through the top of the hole here. Now the one thing I noticed is that these holes are actually the perfect size for these, for these machine screws here, as I'm dropping everything because I can actually just go ahead and screw it in and it actually threads in just a little bit, which is nice. So it's almost acting like a screw, imagine that. And now as that comes through, I'm going to take, this is a 3 16 rubber washer. I'm going to place that on the machine screw and then I'm going to have my L bracket here also just kind of hold that into place because as I recall it's a, not a super tight fit but I do want to basically thread it right through that as well. So this rubber washer that I put here in between the bracket and the and the fan is going to help pre prevent vibration and noise. Now I'm just going to throw on another rubber washer I'm going to be adding a flat washer, a number 10 flat washer, a number 10 lock washer, and then a number 10 nut here onto that. Yes, that's a lot of hardware. You could probably get away without the lock washer and whatnot, but I do want to make sure that everything is as secure as possible. Just get my very official tool here, these needle nose pliers. Should have brought my wrenches downstairs. So here we are. After tightening that, this is perfect. Everything's going to be locked really nicely into place here. And I'm just going to repeat on the other side. And then we'll have both of the brackets that we need. Awesome. Let's see how quickly I can do that. Is that a little spacer? Now for actually mounting this, I'm aware that I've got a bit of a gap here. I think that's going to be okay. The air should all mainly go right out through this, this, whole, this port that I've got cut here. I'm also thinking that if some of it does 
spread out a little bit and hit here and here, that's actually also going to help create a little bit of extra airflow within the chamber. I'm totally fine with that. If I find that it seems to be an issue and this is not working as effectively as I want later on, I could always use some more tape and even kind of seal up maybe the top and the bottom of this just a little bit. But for now, I think it's going to be okay. That being said, I'm just going to eyeball about where I want this. So for mounting this, I've got these number 10 by three quarter inch. Again, this is stainless steel machine screws. And I'm going to be using number 10 flat washers on that. And then a rubber washer because we're going to, once again, be making contact with the galvanized steel, whoop, galvanized steel L bracket. And thank goodness we're actually, thank goodness, Robertson heads, imagine that. You gotta love them. Here we go, side to side, that's looking really good. Top to bottom, again, really good right there. I could have pre-drilled this here. However, knowing that this is just a plastic fridge wall, a little pressure and I'm able to break through. Just thread the screw in. I was curious if this was going to cause a vibration issue by not having a rubber washer on the inside here, but I believe because of the tape there and the fact that I've got the rubber washer on the actual fan there, I don't think it'll be a problem. If it is, I can always unscrew and attach. Yeah, I can always unscrew and install one of those as well. And one thing you might notice that differs from my original hearing chamber build is that the first time I had the fan upside down, and my thought was that that air would kind of swoop like this and get sucked out. However, I found that water could drip on the inside of that, which was a bit of a hassle. So doing this is going to, is going to help prevent that. So now I'm just going to take the power and plug it in and let's see what it sounds like. Ooh, let's get a little closer. Very nice. No rattling or anything like that, perfect. So I'm just going to sort of clean up in here, wipe up any sort of mess that might have been created and phase one complete. Here's the port from the outside and feeling here, I can definitely feel a good breeze coming through. So we're getting good airflow. Okay, so for my fan input, so that I can help actually completely recycle the air in there, I've got this AC Infinity fan, the exact same one that I've got for my output and I wanna have this blowing in. Now because these fans, which are really great, come up like this and then blow out this way. I don't want to mount something on the side of the fridge that sticks out maybe this far and it's a little bit weird and I, I'm not super co confident that it's going to, to mount really nicely. What I got here is an ABS project box and I'm going to actually mount the fan inside of this, like this, and it's going to come, the air is going to get sucked in from here and it's going to shoot out this way. So I'm going to be able to mount this box directly to the side of the fridge. Now, I got, this was the largest box that this particular company had, and the great thing about it is that when you go and actually tuck this in here, just like this, it actually fits perfectly in here, it's completely snug. So in order to ensure a more efficient dropping of the humidity when I have the curing chamber just loaded up with all kinds of meat, uh, I want to be able to have an air input as well as that air output. So I've got the same AC Infinity fan, the exact same as the other one, so I can just daisy chain them. And the great thing about this is that I can also control the airflow on this in addition to the other one separately in case I want to have my input a little bit different than my output. 
Um, now, because this style of fan sucks and then and then sends it out this particular direction, I wasn't really a fan of mounting it like this on the side of the curing chamber. I was trying to figure out a way to properly mount this. I want a bit of a housing on it because I don't want it just open like that. So what I've got here is this project box that I picked up off Amazon, this ABS project box, which is really quite strong. I think it's going to look good on the curing chamber. And what I'm going to do is actually mount it so that the fan will sit like this here on this part, on the lid of this project box. And then I'm going to have, and then I'm going to build actually a bit of a tunnel, this curved plastic here, which is going to basically create a tunnel like this and <laughs> that's the sound it's going to make and send the air flowing out through this end here into the curing chamber. So I got that plastic. It's actually a Betty Crocker storage container. I just used a pair of tin snips and cut some of this plastic out. So now in order to actually make this work, I need to be able to cut a hole in that ABS, a circular hole. I need to cut a rectangular hole here for this tunnel to go through directly into the curing chamber. And then I'm going to need another hole We'll see possibly on here. I'll just figure out exactly where I need to have that, that I can run the wiring through here as well. So now the very nerve wracking job of cutting this ABS box. All right. So I've got this all prepped up here. Fortunately, this roll of tape was the exact diameter that I needed. So I've just gone ahead and traced out my circle. I've got this all masked up. I'm hoping that the masking tape will help prevent any sort of issues when I'm actually cutting this. And the way that I'm going to be doing this cut here is I've got these plastic jigsaw bits. Pick these up off of Amazon. Uh, apparently they're supposed to work quite well with plastic. I've read online a couple people had done something similar, cutting holes in this type of box using these blades. So fingers crossed that that works. Additionally, in order to get that jigsaw blade in there, I've just got some metal bits here. I've got a, a series of incrementally larger bits. I'm just going to start with a small hole and work my way up to a larger one. And I'm going to, going to be doing that fairly close here so that once I have that blade in there, I should just be able to swoop in and cut around. Here we go. All right, I've got this cut. I can get my blade in here. Now the, re <laughs> so nervous about this here. Now I, I have this attached. This is actually deep enough that I should be able to run that blade and it's not going to hit on the bottom. This is the perfect height to be able to doing that, to be able to do that. And in order to prevent vibration between the two, I just taped this strip of cardboard in here. So I'm going to be cutting through the cardboard as well, but hopefully that'll prevent any sort of vibration and damage to this plastic. So that hole went really quite well. Um, let's see if I have similar luck with the rest of this. Here. Great success. Now, before I go ahead making any sort of a, a hole on the back side of this here where the tunnel's going to go through, I'm actually going to construct the tunnel just so I know for sure exactly how big it's going to be. So what I've done is I've taken this double-sided, this is kind of like a, a thicker tape almost, um, double-sided, and I've got this on the back side here. My thought about, um, and my rationale behind putting this in here was that it will allow hopefully for a little bit of vibration dampening because my whole idea here is that I want to minimize any sort of noise whatsoever with this curing chamber. So I've got that on the back side, which was actually holding half decently, but then I've just taken some of this black Gorilla tape and I'm just also using that to hold on here just like so. So now this is really quite secure on there, which is perfect. Now I did take some Gorilla, just the clear repair tape and put it across here. And that allowed me to just make sort of a, a nice seamless transition up and over there. Now I want to get the other, the top part here, this little tunnel going on there. I do want to be able to provide some support in between the top and the bottom. So what I've got for that is a couple of these erasers. These are just like your standard school erasers. I went with this particular brand here and I took just a utility knife and cut off bit of an angle there since they are going to be here I want that air to be able to come up and rather than hitting a hard 90 and causing some sort of disruption like that I'm totally fine with this coming up and hitting this and then curving and heading straight in so I'm going to be able to do that the other nice thing about having that support in there 
is that that's going to allow me to determine exactly how high this needs to go, just like that. Now, before I put that on, I need to take this here. This is just more of that double-sided tape. And I'm going to stick it on the back of this. And looks like that's just about the perfect size, actually. Now, I am going to want to just sort of hedge my bets here with securing this eraser in place. So I'm just going to use a small amount of some PL here on each of these. Not that this should have a lot of pressure to get jostled around one way or another on this, but I do want to make sure that it'll be nice and secure. So now I want to secure this here and I was toying around with some different ideas, even just like taping this or whatever. But at the same time, I didn't want to have anything sticky on the inside just because if any sort of, you know, particular, I mean, I'm really hoping that I don't get particles of stuff in there, but I didn't really want anything gumming up and sticking to the inside of that. So what I'm going to be using here is this is some parafilm. This is laboratory film that you can use in like sort of like really heavy duty, uh, just plastic wrap that they use to cover up beakers and stuff like that. So I'm going to give this a whirl here and see how it turns out for this purpose. All right, there we are. Tunnel is almost complete. The last thing I need to do here still is just seal up these sides here. I believe I'll just take a little bit more of that parafilm, cut sort of a piece that can go there, and then just tape it on just to secure it. Okay, there we go. Is it the prettiest tunnel known to humanity? I doubt it, but is it really functional? I'm pretty sure it is. I can't wait to see this thing in action. So now it's time to cut the hole through which this is going to pass on the back side of the box, and then that is where we're going to have to match up to have a hole going into the actual curing chamber. All right, so it's the exact same process as before, just different shape. Ta-da! So as you can see, this back hole here is just a little bit large, but that's okay because I'm going to use some of that double-sided tape stuff here just to kind of help prevent, again, vibration in along there. Now the last thing I need to do is cut a space here. I want to be able to get the cord out. So what I decided to do here is I'm just going to cut a little bit of a notch out of the back part, just big enough for the, the actual narrower part of the cord. Initially I thought I'd have to cut some sort of a large hole through which this speed, uh, um, speed switch and, and everything could pass through. But if I do it just right at the edge of this here, it only needs to be big enough for that little cord, which should be great. So now I'm just going to go ahead and just using the jigsaw, just kind of cut down a little bit here, cut a few little grooves, and hopefully that'll be good enough. There we go. That is perfect. Okay, I'm going to get my tape in and around that. I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and then see how it assembles. So back at the curing chamber, I want to sort of mimic what I've done with this fan as far as mounting goes. So the front corner of it, I want to start about six inches in from the front here. And I'm aiming to have it about two inches from the top here. And that should be a pretty good, pretty good location for that. So I'm just going to go ahead on this tape out here and mark in where I want this to go. So I need my box for that. All right, so I've made some marks here. So this is that front corner. I'm just going to use the box, the hole that I cut in the box here as my guide for that. And I'll try and get 
just like so. There we are. So it might go just a touch, just a touch bigger than this all the way around. Whew. I love projects and tight quarters. Okay, so the first move here is going to be using just a small, like an eighth inch drill bit. I'm gonna drill there and then switch up to a larger one. This should enable me to get the the uh, blade for the jigs on there nicely. Obviously safety first here with no glasses on. And so that allows me to get my metal blade into here. Again, tight quarters, very fun. All right, sad full disclosure because nothing but the truth around here. Going through this, I did find that there were there, there were two wires in there. There's a pair of wires. I, I don't know what this pair of wires is for, but that really pisses me off. This is not in the wiring schematics. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use probably a chisel or something. I'm going to dig out around here a little bit. I'm going to just using some morettes and some spare wiring. I'm going to basically repair it. We'll see how that goes. All right, this is a delay I hadn't counted on, but here we are. You can see I got those morettes on there and up the top and the bottom, and then I've sort of tunneled into the foam a little bit of the way around here. I'm just going to basically lay them into this trench that I've created, tape all the way here, which I was going to do anyway, tape around with black Gorilla Tape here, just to make this nice and smooth, and that's going to conceal those, and hopefully everything should be good. I also, if you can hear it, there we are, just turned on the fridge here, and it seems to be running just fine, so looks like I avoided disaster. Now that that disaster has been dealt with here, I'm actually really liking this. So I've got this all up in place here and I, I've got it so that this is all completely level with the top there. Now my trick is going to be hanging on to this box, popping this off, and then I actually need to mount it to the fridge itself. All right, so the way that I'm gonna mount this is with these number eights wood slash metal screws. These are like an inch and a half or so because the mounting holes <laughs> are way deep down in here. It's a little bit of a hassle. I'm also going to be using more of these rubber washers here, just all in the spirit of hopefully minimizing vibration. But the way that I'm doing that is to take my screwdriver, kind of get this in here, and then I gotta kind of aim that up. So I'll just take a second, just like that. But of course, I don't want it sticking out that far. All right, we've got this perfectly lined up here. Now I'm just gonna start this with my drill. Ooh. Now let's get this next one lined up. Everything is still handy little light here. Still looking good. Just need to get two of these going, and I can finish them off. There we are. Actually, let's get all four of these. I'm gonna have to finish this with the screwdriver just because these holes are so long. Onto the screwdriver. All right, we are mounted nice and securely, and I have screwed on the lid here, so now it's just time to get these cords set up. All right, everything's hooked up. These are working in tandem, which is beautiful. I have the top fan plugged directly into the power. The bottom fan is hooked up to the daisy chain USB plug that's just on the other side here, and now I just need to clean up all these wires. The final upgrade step here was just to get my filtration, a very fancy filtration system in place. This is just a double layer of cheesecloth that I've secured here with vinyl tape. This is just my, my trial run with this. I wanted something that'll be easy to change out. I was thinking about using some fancier tape, like some Gorilla tape or something like that, but I didn't want anything that was gonna be too sticky or too difficult. I didn't wanna to have to tape some sort of a plate in place to hold it here. I think this will work really quite well. Now that this curing chamber upgrade is complete, I just turned it on, plugged it in, and see we're still a little bit warm and we're heading towards the correct humidity in here because I'm going to be loading it up with a few pieces of delightful charcuterie today. Trial run! 
Okay, I'm really happy with this humidity control upgrade here. I've got three fresh pieces of cured pork charcuterie in here, all right around the high two kilogram range. And with this setting here, I've got it set to kick on for those fans to cycle on at 75% relative humidity. And when it kicked on, it got as high as 75.1. And then it took exactly actually three and a half minutes to get back down to 73% relative humidity. And it's been almost a minute since then. And as you can see here, it didn't really overshoot what it was going for to dry things out in here with recycling that air or uh, circulating that air. So extremely pleased, dare I say, this upgrade has actually taken this curing chamber to 11.